Welcome back to the Azure Cosmos DB Essential Series. My name is Mustafa. I'm the Portfolio PMM for Azure Cosmos DB. And this season, we're joined by Mark Brown, a PM on the Azure Cosmos DB product team. In previous seasons, we've covered tips and tricks for getting started, fundamental NoSQL concepts, as well as how and why leveraging a distributed database in your application can improve performance, availability, and flexibility. This season, we want to take use cases a step further and dive into some of the architectures customers are using to build lightweight applications. Today, we're going to start with one of the major use cases for NoSQL, Internet of Things, or IoT, and real-time telemetry. So Mark, thanks for joining us this season. Thanks, happy to be here. Before we jump into the actual architecture, uh, can you share a little bit about why Azure Cosmos DB is so well suited for the IoT slash real-time telemetry use case? Sure, so let's start with a scenario. Let's say I've decided to build a sensor device that can do things like monitor temperature, humidity, carbon monoxide, and even has a motion sensor on it. I'm gonna sell this device to commercial buildings and offer a service they can use to monitor their buildings and do things like integrate with environmental systems to turn AC and furnaces on or off, or turn lights on if someone walks into a room, or basic security if say a motion sensor goes off during after hours. Right, so this sounds like a great device and service that say a building management company would love to use so they can easily gather all sorts of data and insights that let them know how their buildings are performing. Uh, for instance, they could use the data from the motion sensors and um, time of day to know whether they can adjust the environmental controls for after hours, turn off lights, et cetera. Precisely. We've got the device and we need a way to capture this data and then process it such that we can send signals back to the device or other systems. We also need a way to present this data to building management personnel. This may be one or more dashboards to help them visualize data starting at a high level aggregating data from across the devices so they can get a good picture of the health of their buildings. Now, this is obviously very specific to this use case, but the example can easily be extrapolated to retail inventory monitoring or healthcare device monitoring, smart home device monitoring, tons of other different use cases. Azure Cosmos DB is great for ingesting large amounts of IoT data for a few reasons. First, Azure Cosmos DB is horizontally scalable. This means that the database can continue to grow in size and throughput seamlessly as we ingest data. Second, Azure Cosmos DB has an amazing change data feature called ChangeFeed that allows data written to Cosmos DB to drive event-driven applications and services, providing a way to easily integrate data written to Cosmos DB into other microservices. Third, Azure Cosmos DB is schema agnostic. Schema is managed at the application level. In IoT scenarios, it's not uncommon for successive generations of devices to emit slightly different data. This schema agnostic capability means that changes to the data being ingested does not require changes to the database's schema in the backend. Lastly, Cosmos DB has a unique capability to build analytics on operational data with Synapse Link. That lets developers build applications with near real-time analytics on their operational data. Okay, so, with these characteristics in mind, um, let's talk through an architecture we would likely use when building out this IoT application. Sure. So every IoT workload starts with the device. IoT devices are constantly reporting data. They are basically telemetry collectors, and the frequency with which they report the data largely depends on the workload itself. For instance, a device that measures moisture in the soil may only send data once an hour. A device monitoring something with real-time implications may report multiple times a second. A device like ours that's used for environmental data may report eh, pretty much every second. Regardless of the interval uh, in which the data is sent, as the number of devices grows, the amount of data grows with it. In scenarios combining high-frequency data and large numbers of devices, the amount of data transmitted and ingested can grow quite large. In a typical IoT scenario, you would have devices that are managed and communicate with some device management service or gateway. Devices will initially be provisioned and configured and then deployed into the field. Those devices then emit their data back to say IoT Hub, which acts as a gateway collecting that data emitted from each device. Once ingested, IoT Hub may do some basic transformations to the data and may even forward the data uh, from the raw devices to something like blob storage as a cold store. On the hot path, data will typically then go to a streaming layer such as Spark. 
Here the data is picked up and processed in real time, doing things like creating moving averages and other sorts of aggregates on the device data. From there, the data is then sent to a storage layer. When using a database like Cosmos DB, this data can be quickly indexed and used to serve queries on the hot store. Here, you may typically build things like mobile or web applications that can be used by field personnel to get real-time data from specific devices, or maybe look at a dashboard with an aggregate of data over several devices in a specific area. In our scenario, maybe a field engineer is seeing that a floor is empty and opts to turn down the AC. This is also where things like change feed can come in handy if the data needs to be forwarded to other microservices after initial processing. For instance, say one of our devices has detected both increased temperature and CO2. It's possible there may be a fire. The microservice could then send a message back to another service to alert personnel or send a message to IoT Hub to turn on the device's camera to confirm there's actually a fire there. The fact that you can respond to data in near real time is what's important here. And things like change feed give you that capability. That makes sense. Um, so it seems in this scenario with the building sensors, um, there's quite a bit of data that comes into Cosmos DB. How do we deal with all this data, right? I just imagine that even a small building with a few hundred sensors over a small amount of time, like a month, um, there's going to be a ridiculous amount of data just sitting in Cosmos DB, especially as a hot store. Yeah, that's true. So this is something we need to think about. Uh, Cosmos DB is horizontally scalable, which means that Cosmos DB will happily add storage as the amount of data grows. And this is fine. Uh, users shouldn't have to think about whether they have enough storage for their device readings for that day or week or even that month. Cosmos DB stores data on SSDs, and it's often inefficient economically to store large volumes of data, especially old data, uh, in this type of data store. You could store petabytes of data on Cosmos DB, but if you're not actively using it, why would you? So when planning, you should ask the question of where this data should live over time and for how long. Typically for a hot store, device telemetry like this is TTL'd or time-to-lived over some period of time. Now that amount of time can vary. In some cases, say in a healthcare workload, the raw device telemetry may be sent to a cold store in blob storage, and even process data stored in Cosmos DB might also be sent to a cold store, maybe for say auditing purposes. It all depends on the workload. Now, there are a couple of ways that users can move data from a hot store like Cosmos DB to a cold store. They can use change feed that I talked about earlier, such that whenever new data is written to Cosmos DB, it gets picked up and written to blob storage. But there's actually another option that's kind of new and pretty cool. Uh, and it, this is a new capability that we released not too long ago. And that feature is called Synapse Link. So can you explain how that works? How would you use Synapse Link to provide a cold storage option for data in Azure Cosmos DB? Right, so Synapse Link is a way to build near real-time analytics on operational databases like Cosmos DB. How it works is as data is written into Cosmos DB, the service takes that data and writes it into a completely isolated and separate column store fully managed by Cosmos DB. From there, you can create workspaces in Azure Synapse and write scripts for say Spark or SQL to do your analytics. The cool part is that the underlying storage for this column store is the same blob storage I mentioned before. So the cost is basically the same. Not only that, but there's no impact to the performance of Cosmos DB when that data is copied from Cosmos to the column store. Because the storage is inexpensive, you can TTL your data off of Cosmos DB and just simply leave it in Synapse Link. Best of all, you only pay for the storage to keep it there. Unlike storing data in blob storage, you can also easily query the data. If you stored that data in blob storage as JSON files, you would have to ingest that data back into Cosmos DB or some other database and then run queries to access the data. So from an architectural standpoint, I feel like that really simplifies things now because instead of having to move that data in a cold store and facilitate that process with something like an Azure function, um, we can just point directly from IoT Hub straight into Cosmos DB, turn on Synapse Link, and from there, leveraging something like Microsoft Power BI, we can visualize the whole thing. Yeah. So that really leaves us with what, like six parts, our devices, IoT Hub, um, Spark Streaming, Cosmos DB is a hot store, uh, Azure Synapse is both analytics and cold storage, and then Power BI to visualize the whole thing. Yep, once the data is in Azure Synapse, I can take advantage of everything within Azure Synapse as a service. I can do real-time analytics, I can stream that data back to Cosmos DB as like a real-time serving layer for things like dashboards and Power BI. Uh, I can take that data and train models that can then be used to do things like anomaly detection uh, for my devices. 
I could build advanced analytics and use that to offer additional services to my customers to make even more money. Best of all, the overall architecture is simple and efficient. So before we wrap up this first video, let's do a quick summary of why this is one of our leading use cases. IoT and real-time telemetry applications have high data volume demand and often need to respond to events in real time. Cosmos DB being a scale-out database with rich change data capture via change feed is kind of a one-to-one -one solution to the needs of this use case. Additionally, all this telemetry is collected so that we can provide near real-time insights, do deep analytics, and identify trends across the data. That HTAP capability of Cosmos DB means we can do this in near real time with Synapse Link, and the hot cold store behavior of Cosmos DB means we don't need to manage an ETL pipeline to make that possible. So with that, uh, we'll wrap up the first episode of season three. Join us in the next episode where we're going to do the same thing for a product catalog solution that we see customers building with Azure Cosmos DB. Thanks to Mark for joining us. Uh, we hope you learned something and we'll see you next time.